Hello, it's Ariel and I'm back with a new video. Happy Halloween! I love October because I can let out my inner goth and just wear black all the time and people don't think it's weird. <laughs> Mostly people think it's weird because I normally dress in pastel colors, so it's not that goth people are weird. Goth people are pretty awesome. Which leads me to today's project and that is going to be cottage core but goth. You could probably argue that cottage core but goth is Greenwich vibes, and to that, I would say, yeah, that's probably correct. But we're gonna call it cottage core goth, and that's what I want to do today. Instead of working with a vintage pattern, I am actually going to be making something from scratch. I am going to show you to the drafting table and explain my idea further, and we'll go from there. So like all chaotic creatives, I put all my ideas on sticky notes. And here's mine. But for the sake of my audience, I redrew my design on a bigger piece of paper and in full detail. Well, starting off, I'm making this outfit into two parts. It's going to have the blouse and then it's going to have the skirt. The skirt I have yet to decide whether I want it to be in black or in charcoal. What's the difference? Not much. But I feel like the charcoal would help make the velvet ribbon that I have stand out more. All right, as far as the design itself goes, I'm going to have a wide belly band like I normally do with all my skirts. I designed this belly band around some velvet ribbon that I have. Uh, the blouse is either going to be black or gray, depending on if I'm going to use black or gray for the skirt. And that is my plan for now. Next is to see what kind of materials I can grab. After choosing fabric over food this week, I managed to get a ton of this beautiful black linen. It isn't as dark as I thought it was going to be, which is perfect. I start with the belly band because I want to get that all done before I do anything else. And there you go. That's what I got going on there. I sew the sides together and then I use my extra ribbon to cover up those side seams, completely forgetting that I was saving that ribbon for the pockets. So I'll have to use an alternative when I get there. Next, I clean up all the lines by serging all the edges around the belly band. And then while I have the serger out, I serge up my straps. This is always a fun part. It's like my own personal ASMR. After that, I serge around the inside part of the belly band. Also, I don't know if you associate belly bands with doggy diapers, but I do, and that's what I think of every time I say belly band, but I'll still use it to refer to my waistbands because they do wrap around my belly and it feels like I'm getting a hug all day long. After that, I serge the edges of the exterior pockets, and then I also serge the edges of the interior pockets because I bought way too much fabric this time, and I cannot be stopped when it comes to pockets. And then I sew all the panels together, and then I serge those edges as well before putting in the zipper. I didn't have too many issues with this zipper. I also knew I was doing a lot of gathering at the back, so it wasn't gonna be that big of an issue if it wasn't beautiful because It'll be a lot of, there will be a lot of ruffles around that area anyway. And then with my big old head in the way, I sew in the interior pockets on either side of the skirt. And then I take a quick cat break and lay out my skirt so I can put on the exterior pockets and line those up and pin them down. And of course, having a white cat, you're bound to find a hairball or two. But I also still had a little bit of velvet left over, so I decided I would use that up and make little bows to go on top of the pockets. And then I'll put a little button in the center of the bow. And of course, when I go to finish the hem, I realize I'm completely out of black or gray hem tape, bias tape, ribbon, whatever. But I do have a ton of orange bias tape from when I made my pumpkin pinafore last year and decided, you know, why not? No one's ever going to see it anyway and it's going to be like a little spooky time peekaboo if they do. And iron it down. I usually go for about three inches because I, I don't know, that just seems like a good complete number. And then I'll iron it down, I'll fold it, I'll pin it, then I'll hand sew it on the back side. That way you can't see it on the front side. And then I am done with the skirt. Now moving on to the blouses. And yes, I did say blouses because not only did I get gray because I got black fabric like I said I was going to do, I also got black fabric. And then I also got white. 
because why not? I'm going to be honest with you. I did technically use a pattern for this skirt. I used the McCall's 8269, which is the same pattern that I use for my favorite yellow skirt. Now, unlike the skirt, I did not actually use a pattern to make these blouses. They were drafted and I absolutely hate drafting, but I think I did a pretty decent job. At the very least, they did fit when I finished. And I think that's all I'm really looking for when it comes to clothes. More or less, I just cut out two big rectangles for the front and back with a little bit of scoop for the, around the necklines. And then for the sleeves, I did a shape that makes it a little more narrow around the shoulders that and flares out towards the wrists. And I finished all these blouses with my serger because I'm running pretty low on ribbon and since I had to do three blouses for this outfit and the serger goes real fast. After serging all the pieces, I then finish off the hem by doing a fold and a fold and then top stitching that fold down. And to save on money, I use the elastic I already have on hand, so I'm making pretty wide channels because I have more or less only wide elastic to use. Because apparently I only carry wide, extra wide, then tiny COVID mask thin elastic. So one inch cuffs are going to have to do. And then I shove the elastic through and I test it out. It's good to go. And then I just repeat that entire process two more times and then I have my black, and then I have my charcoal blouse. I didn't change any of the construction methods for the blouses, but on the black one, I did decide to mix it up and I made the blouse itself a lot shorter, so it's more of like a bare midriff top. I've been getting really into those lately because they take away the bulk from my high-waisted skirts, and I feel like I'm probably gonna end up wearing the black one a lot more than the other two. Uh, and then for the gray, I did not have any gray bias tape, so I ended up using black on the top. I don't think it's that noticeable from the outside. I also searched it in black because there's no way I'm going to buy four rolls of gray thread when black will do. And then after that, all I do is thread my hem tape string through the top, and I cut it and tie it off, and that's all I got. And it's done. Time for the reveal. All right, well, there you have it. I've got another outfit. I actually got a couple of outfits now because I made so many of these blouses. Uh, I really do like how the blouse came out despite having to make the pattern from scratch. I don't really like making patterns from scratch. I don't know whatever it is. I don't know why, but I find working with pre-existing patterns and just sizing them to my size is mentally easier than trying to make a brand new pattern. <laughs> But I did like how it came out, particularly the sleeves. I like how narrow it is at the front and then poofy, witchy bell sleeves at the bottom. That is totally my aesthetic and I love it. I absolutely love this skirt. I've been thinking about this design for quite a while because I've had this black ribbon for years. I just never had a reason to make a black linen skirt because I don't really wear black in my wardrobe. 
but as I had said in the last video, if you've seen that one, that I want to do more dark aesthetics because, for one, I like them, and two, I think it would be a great way to mix up my wardrobe. I'm definitely not going to get rid of the pastels. I definitely love pink and will be making more pink things, but who doesn't like a dark and brooding wardrobe for the fall and winter seasons? I think that will be fun. So I look forward to making more, and I have more aesthetics in mind that may or may not involve a bunch of applique butterflies. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit a like button. That would be great. Uh, if you are not subscribed, perhaps subscribing, and leave a comment on another aesthetic that you think I should try. I am certainly open. I don't know all of them. There's so many. Until next time, you have a great day. Bye! Hello, it's me. Pepper, don't rub up against that.